Have anyone in this room ever felt alone? You can raise your hand or not. Even in a room full of people, you still felt alone. Has anyone in this room ever felt lost? Maybe not really lost, but lost. You, you just can't grab a hold of what's happening in society or in your mind or in your spirit. Has anyone here ever felt confused of what's happening in this world? Why all the pain? Why all the suffering? Why this? Why that? Why, why is this happening to me? Has anyone ever felt forgotten? Alone? Like the world just passes you by? Have you ever had your hope fade? Have you ever had your dreams crushed? My message today is lost and found. I'm going to be reading from Luke 15, verses 1 through 7. You're welcome to look it up in your Bibles if you wish, or right here on our monitors, or on your iPads, your iPhones, or whatever phones you got. We all need to be needed, and we all need to be loved. There's something about a God created us to have connections with others. Jesus could have gone and done all the things he wanted to in his time here on earth. But he chose 12 others to walk with him and come with him on this journey. When man was created, God said, all right, this guy needs some help. <laughs> Thank God for my wife. You know, because, and he said, let me create woman. Could have just left Adam standing there alone, you know, taking care of the gardens and the cows and the chickens or whatever was roaming the earth at that time. But he said, no, nah, this, this fellow needs some help. So he created Eve. Hallelujah. All you Eves out there. We are all lost and found as well. We all have moments in our lives when... We, we don't have that connection. As soon as we're born into this, to this world, there's something missing. We begin this search to fill this void that is inside of us. We begin to search for this God. We begin to look around and say, there's something more out there. Our journey begins to find Jesus. Today, I want us to look at a passage of Scripture... The words of Jesus that I pray today will help you in some way when you feel a little lost, when you're unsure of your direction, that there is hope, that there is someone there, that there is something to guide you and take care of you. I want to read these seven verses real quick, then I'll go back and I'll, and I'll start to break them down a little by little. So I'm going to read Luke 15 verses 1 through 7 and it reads, Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him, to hear him. I'm talking about Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. He, so he spoke this parable to them. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And, which, and when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over the one sinner who repents than over the 99 just persons who need no repentance. I love the first part here. It says, then all of the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him. Anybody in this room... Perfect. Anybody in this room never sinned? Anybody in this room never cast the first stone? Never had a lustful thought? Anybody in this room never did a little something that you know wasn't right? Maybe instead of 
one bowl of ice cream, you ate the whole tub. Everybody in this room ever, you know, drove, you know, you, you see the, the stop sign, you see the red light, but you still kind of gun it anyway, you know. You, you know the law says you got to stop, but ain't nobody around. I'll just, anybody here ever send it just a little bit? I think so. Me, a sinner. I've made a lot of bad choices in my life. I, I wish I could go back. You know, they say, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I wish I could go back and change a few things along the road of Joel's life. You know, maybe things would have been a little easier. Maybe things would have, I would have, could have made a wa few more wise choices rather than the things that I chose. My flesh began to take over in aspects of my life. Things begin to change little by little. The sinner begins to emerge. I do know this Jesus of which I talk. I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And if anybody here doesn't know about Jesus and, and hasn't accepted him at the end of this sermon, we'll, we'll, we'll say a prayer and you can accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today. But I am saved, but I still sin. I still think wrong thoughts. The words of my mouth are not always what they should be. My thought process is not always what it could be. My compassion sometimes lacks. But it's okay. Because as we look a little further here, in verse 2 it reads, And the Pharisees, now these are the, in a sense, the holy men, the people who are in charge of, of what's going on in the cities these days, back in the Bible days. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Now they're talking about Jesus. So here we have Jesus, who had never sinned. I don't know. It's kind of hard, I think, for us to process that. That every word that was spoken out of his mouth was always the correct one. That every thought was all. So there's something important here. Here is a man who should be held above the highest regard by the scribes and, and these people. And they, they should be just on their knees saying, man, oh man. But what they're doing is they're judging him. Has anyone here ever been judged? Has anyone here ever been taken down? Or tried to be taken down. I think in our lives repeatedly over and over. Especially the more sometimes. The more you strive to do good for God and others. The more people dislike what you do. It doesn't matter if it's in church or not. But here we have Jesus. He says. Man them sinners that's my crowd. Those are the people I need to be around. Those are the people that are in my heart. Those are the people that, that need this love, that need this. A lot of times, especially some of us who go to church a lot and have, have been going to church for many years. All of a sudden we look around and there's nobody who doesn't know Christ in our lives. There's nobody to invite to church. Because we've isolated ourselves so much. That we're actually losing touch with the surroundings that are around us. Here we have Jesus who says, I will come and eat at your table. I will come and spend time with you because you need this love. And the people in power don't really care for that. There's someone that cares for our souls and our well-being. We feel alone, we feel lost, we feel confused, we feel forgotten, our hope begins to fade. But Jesus will sit with us. When we make all the wrong choices in life and all of a sudden we seem to have the world crashing in on us. Jesus will sit with us. Verses 3 and 4 reads, So he spoke this parable to them saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, 
does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. So, here's Jesus using the analogy of him being the shepherd and we being the sheep. Now, some of you may know or you may not know that sheep aren't the brightest animals in the world. Anybody here kind of understand that? You know, um, cats are smarter than sheep. Dogs are smarter than sheep. Pigs are smarter than sheep. I think parrots and birds. I mean, sheep are, that's why they kind of stay in a herd because they don't know what to do. They just figure, well, I'll stay with everybody else. And that's why it's... it's that's why it takes one man, you know, a shepherd to kind of gather the sheep because they, they ain't all there. They're like, okay, I'll follow you. you know, we, we, we are the sheep here. Sometimes I feel like the sheep. It seems like every decision I make is the wrong one. I can't get past this and that. I keep sitting and going in a circle and all these things keep happening. I, I, I guess perhaps I am the sheep. When I compare my... My decisions to Christ, then yeah, I guess I need something and someone to guide me around. So here's Jesus, the shepherd, me, the sheep. And he searches for me. I am that one person. I know Christ is my Lord and Savior. But there are times when I'm not where I should be. I know Christ is my Lord and Savior. But there are areas of my life. Maybe forgiveness. Maybe this. Maybe that. Where I'm not connected to God. I'm lost. I'm confused. My shepherd will come search for the one. As I go through my life, and, and, and it seems as though I'm being pulled from the flock over and over and over again. My decisions that I choose, to, the way, the way I, I, I choose to live my life, I, I seem to be separated from the flock repeatedly over and over again. And sometimes these things can mount and mount to the point where I'm completely disconnected from my God. Especially in certain areas of my life. But there's this Jesus. Who comes searching for the one. I think in all of our lives we've all been that one. Especially when we find salvation for the very first time. And we accept Lord Christ as our Lord and Savior. But I'm talking about the other times when. We make bad choices. And then we blame God and say where were you? Like it's his fault that we went this path. But I'll tell you something. I will share with you something. That God is searching for us all the time. He's right there. As the things of life pull me from the flock. In verses 5 and 6 it reads. And when he has found it. He lays it on his shoulders. Rejoicing. And when he comes together. He calls his friends together. And his friends and his neighbors. Saying to them rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep. Which was lost. Oh, to lay on the shoulders of Christ. Have you ever felt like you couldn't walk another step? Have you ever felt like your journey is over? Have you ever felt like, Lord, I've done all I can and there's really no place else for me to go? Guess what he does? He picks you up and he puts you on your shoulders. Has there ever been those moments in your life... When the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Those moments when. I, guess, I hate to say God shows up. Because he's always there. But we see him more than we don't do usually. That's when God picks you up. And puts you on his shoulders. When all the turmoil in life is going on. Yet you're able to sleep through the night. 
when all the things are happening on your job or you've lost your job or this or your kids are going nuts and yet there is still a peace inside you. Jesus has put you on his shoulders. He is carrying you. He, he has taken the burden. And what does Jesus do? What does the shepherd do when he found his sheep? He goes and he comes home and calls together his friends and neighbors. Saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Not only does Jesus rejoice, but the heavens rejoice as well. And Jesus is so excited to have you. So excited that you've turned back to him. That, that, that you can turn this part of your life over to him. Maybe you don't know this Jesus. And you don't know this peace that I'm talking about. Jesus who died upon the cross for our sins. Was beaten and took the beating for us. But rose again. Ascended unto heaven. And is alive and living today. That is the shepherd that wants to walk with you and guide you. And as we go through this life and the, and the situations come around us and we get lost and we get confused. Sometimes I think we momentarily, maybe it's every other few minutes, we, we, we tend to wander away from the flock. Maybe it's just something in our head or, or the drive to work and all the people on the road doing this and that or Especially a snow day when everybody's going super slow. I think a lot of us begin to veer off course there, you know. We start getting upset and yelling and this and that. And the things of life come against us. But Jesus picks us up. And will put us on his shoulders. Verse 7 reads. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over the one center who repents. Than over the 99 just persons who need no repentance. I know there's been a lot of talk about the 99% and the 1% in the news and things like that. I, I, I want to be that 1% as this is talking about. I am that 1% because I know I have a God who searches for me. I walked away from God for many years. Never went to church for 15, 20 years. My dad's an evangelist, preached all over the world, carried the cross, sitting right there. And when I began to make my own choices, I knew this God. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. But I wanted nothing to do with church. And I was lost. I was wandering around and I was confused. I was forgotten. I had no hope. I'm sitting there, the shotgun on the bed, the shells right next to it. And I say, God, I'm giving you one chance. And I knew of this church down the street. And I didn't want nobody coming with me because this was personal. And I began to go and I'd sit there and I'd watch people sing. And I couldn't sing a word because I didn't feel Jesus loved me anymore because of what I, how I chose to live my life. But after time, I began to understand that this shepherd had searched, was still there. He was right beside me. He was with me this entire time. I was walking. He kept me alive for a reason. There's a reason why we're all in this room today. I don't know exactly what it is, but our shepherd does. Why have we survived this long? So as we go through life and we begin to stumble. And to get tripped up. And we turn around. Or maybe we. First we probably yell unto God. God where are you? I, I, I need you right now. Help me, help me. And he's never left. Our lives are like a light switch with God sometimes. It's very easy to hit that switch and turn him off for a couple of hours. As we go about our own thing. Then we end up making a mess of it. And then we turn that light switch back on and say, where you been, God? You know, it's, it's, 
I would be frustrated by that, but we have a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God who loves us. The heavens rejoice over the one soul that finds heaven. But I still feel that they rejoice when we come back to him. And we turn sections of our lives back over him. When we repent of our sins. When we say, God, I'm sorry for the mess I've made. And I'll try to do better. Even if it's the next day we're doing the same thing again. My shepherd's still there. My shepherd's still near me. Have you ever felt alone? You are found. Have you ever felt lost? You are found. Have you ever felt confused? You are found. Have you ever felt forgotten? You are found. Has your hope ever faded away and you thought that it was all over? You were found. As you go through the rest of this week, one of the things that I say here at the Inspired Church is real church will begin when you walk out of these doors. Because that's where you got to keep loving. That's where you got to keep forgiving. That's where you got to keep giving mercy. That's where you got to keep showing grace. That's where you got to hold your tongue. That's where you got to not lay on the horn. That's where you got to keep that finger down when you're driving in traffic. That's where all of these things of life begin. That's where it really counts. That is where your relationship with Christ is at its breaking point in a sense. In here, Hallelujah. We can get the praise going and we can hear a good sermon. And man, we're close to God. We get back in that traffic. Next thing you know, the anger is beginning to come up again. The things like this. So, don't be too hard on yourself. I think a lot of times those Christians walk around condemned. Feeling condemnation. That we shouldn't. I know that when I was. When I got myself back with God. 2003. When I rededicated my life to him. One of the hardest things for me to do. Was to understand that God wasn't going to beat me over the head with a baseball bat. Every time I sinned. But he was there to take care of me. To love me, to guide me, to show me the directions and the path of my life. I need to try, I need to hold my tongue to learn these things, to learn the Bible, to, to try to love people a little more and a little more and a little more. I didn't like people. And so what does God do? He puts me in a ministry of people. He did a lot of changing of my heart to have me where I am today. To have me where I was a year ago. So hallelujah, God can do everything. I am a sheep, I've realized, in a lot of ways. I realize that Joel needs help. I need a shepherd. I need someone to come looking for me. I need someone to guide me and to be with me and to take care of me. I need these things in my life. I need the heavens to rejoice when I'm here. I need the heavens to rejoice when I turn back to God and say, All right, I'm sorry I've been struggling to forgive this person or that person or this or that. The things that have hurt me in my past. And right now, God, I'm giving it to you. Now, I might have to give it back to you in about another 20 minutes after this meeting. I mean, let's be real here. We are humans, and sometimes these things just are hard to get out of our systems. Sometimes you feel alone in a crowded room. Sometimes you feel lost when you're laying next to your husband or your wife, or you have a room full of kids. Sometimes you feel confused by the things that happen in this earth. 
many a times we feel forgotten like the world has passed us by. But those are the things that the earth, that the devil wants us to focus on. So this week, forget the alone, forget the lost, forget the confused, forget the, the forgotten, and let's focus on the found. Let's focus on Jesus. Let's understand and realize that someone searches for us. Even when we hit that light switch and turn them off. Someone searches for us day by day by day as we change the channel upon him. Hope may fade. But I'm found. We are all that 1%. Dear Jesus, I come before you today and I thank you that you are our God. That all of these things that we go through in life, the, the disconnect that may be, we may be feeling, the, the loneliness that seems to perhaps overwhelm us at times, the forgotten feelings that life may have passed us by or maybe we didn't do all the things we could have done. But what if, what if we're exactly where you want us to be? What if all these trials of life have been so that we could be right here today in our lives? What if like this church Today is a new grand opening for the rest of our lives. Lord, I thank you that you died upon the cross for our sins. I thank you that we are your sheep and that you are our shepherd. If there is anyone here who does not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we can solve that problem it's a simple prayer. You're just <coughs> repenting of your sins, asking God to forgive you, and you're accepting Him as your God. You're saying, I need you. So everyone, please repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I give you all that I am. Forgive me of my sins. I need you. Write my name. In your book of life. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah.